But yes, let's do this. Uh... Game's slightly loud, I'll lower it a little bit. Oh, it's not a click. Eh, that's good enough for me. Alright, let's do this. It's got a bit of a Persona-esque art style there. So A to confirm, B to back out, obviously. Wise logs. We're going to leave X off, because I'm going to voice act this. Alright, works for me. Okay, so LB's open case file. I you to hide the UI. I guess if I want to take a screenshot, but... No idea. Alright. Yep, game's pretty fictional. Oh, this is like a... This seems like a dang it Rampa art style of here. Okay, let's do it. She keeps her eyes closed. She can't forget what happened, but something still lingers in the air. Anger, maybe? No, it's not just anger. Maybe it's regret. A jumble of thoughts sweeps through her mind, and the icy air is burning her cheeks. Flying is more difficult than she thought. Looks like her soul didn't sprout wings after all. Somehow, it's like she's still here. She feels relieved at the thought, and thus, the game begins. The world goes on, and the clock is ticking steadily. The world doesn't owe anything to anyone. So it won't listen to anyone's requests. Even praying won't turn bad things into good things all of a sudden. Therefore, those who expect a lot from the world should overthink their attitude. There is no joy, no sorrow, just emptiness. The world feels heavy on her shoulders. Chapter 1, Dead Cinnabar. Don't even have a sprite for this guy, so, um, we'll just keep the uh, standard voice acting here. Long story short, we will focus all our energy on the preparations of this project. Although, it'll take place next semester. Every day we slack off. Now, being set, the other art clubs will have one more day to catch up to us. Keep in mind that our elite art club has a reputation to uphold. It's essential that we are victorious in the future. I know it's unusual for me to push you guys so hard, and I realize some of you might be uncomfortable with that. Think it over carefully, for your own good. I don't want any more instances here. That's all. Any questions? Uh, <laughs> what about the materials? If you're gonna do oil paints, the paint will be very expensive. That'll be a problem. Ah, your, n your new classmate doesn't have any materials yet, does she? I'll prepare some for her. So do none of them have actual sprites? That's gonna make this tough. Um, I saw her, her with some art supplies today. That's right. Uh, let her use her own supplies. So there's no need to worry about it. Is there? Guys. Well, you can figure out a suitable solution amongst cells. That's all for today. Ding dong bing bong. This really is dang Rampa. The girl has a problem. She suffers from nightmares even during the day. Why can't I move the camera? I mean, I kind of can, not really. No, do why I can there. Weird. Even when it comes to such renowned flashy school, the shadows are still everywhere, lingering. They're relentless. It took her a whole week to figure out where to hand her homework. Nobody even considered offering help, her help. The teachers always seem to be in a hurry after class, avoiding contact with anyone. It's far from what she imagined. Something must be wrong with her. At least, that's what she tells herself. That's why she came here in the first place. Her family moves around a lot, and she could never depend on her friends. The only thing she can depend on is her hobby. 
She doesn't like to talk, and as long as she doesn't have to, everything's fine. At least the school's in our club. If she doesn't need words to go about her hobbies, presumably she won't need to words to make friends. That's what she thought. However, her expectations weren't met. Heh, <laughs> still working on that piece? Just give up already! The girl's smile is mean, a prideful grimace to draw attention and show off to everyone around her. The pain's a little different from what she's imagining, but she's dealing with the uh, past bit by bit after all. The pain is still wet, but once it's dry, she'll pay more attention to the details. <laughs> Come on! Just leave it! You can't just say the next event because you haven't done your part, understand? It doesn't matter, anyway. The work should be more precise. You should have left your room for another line right here. What? Oh, leave her alone. Anyway, she's gonna fall flat on her face anyway, thinking she can play in the big leagues. Those mean words cut deep like a knife. And sadly, it's daily occurrence. <laughs> I wish she'd be more self-aware and know her places. It's so annoying to have the newbie around. Come on, just let her... What? <laughs> Come on, just let her sit here and rot, just like a mushroom. Bye-bye, <laughs> remember what you're supposed to do. They switch off the lights, forgetting the fact that there's someone still in the room. Since there's only one window, the light in the art studio isn't exactly optimal. She doesn't feel like doing anything about it right now. Obviously, the fact that they forgot that she was in the room wasn't an accident. Gradually, everyone's leaving the building, and everything goes silent. Maybe mushrooms grow in silence. In isolation. She preferred to be a mushroom right now. At least people aren't outright cruel to a mushroom. At most, they would casually crush it with one foot. The outcome doesn't seem so bad. What? Uh, what an odd thought to cross your mind. In novels, students are confronted with events like this over and over again. The readers might laugh at the repetitiveness of the author's writing. However, night people would continue laughing once events like that turn into cruelty for themselves. Only once did she manage to muster up the courage to speak out against the other people ganging up on her. It made no difference. She put a wall around herself for our protection. Her very own glass prison protecting her from the cruel outside world. The whole world's against her, at least that's how she feels. In a novel, there'd be two potential scenarios for her, coming out of her shell and breaking the silence, or slowly but surely drowning in it. At least she... And she obviously doesn't have the right kind of personality for the former. The broom and the dustpan are gone. She isn't surprised at the prank, and just quietly closes the cabinet. The classroom is more cluttered than ever, and the crumpled up and the crumpled up paper everywhere seem to be the trap that has laid out for her today. She slowly picks up his paper. Eventually, the run of ideas. Even if this young girl tries to deal with her emotions, the malice of the past doesn't look like it was present future. Even if she struggles to deal with her grief, the pain's relentless, taking it up 24 hours of every day. Even so, she doesn't give up. I don't know what kind of voice to give this person, so we'll go with the default one again. Ah. These guys are really... Should I turn on the lights? The shadows disappear, and the room grows warmer again. Ha. Huh. I figured you'd still be here. Let's get back together. The world goes on, and the clock keeps ticking. The world doesn't know anything to anyone, so it won't listen to anyone's requests. Even praying won't turn bad things to good things all of a sudden. Therefore, those who expect a lot of this world should overthink their attitude. I could rethink, but I'm not going to question the game. I mean, that's why the moth is drawn to the flame. Okay. It's got a very, like, Persona-esque vibe as well. I like this. Okay. That one goes there, and this one... Okay, done. It doesn't really fit. Many people simply grab books, 
flip through them and put flip them through them and put them back. Of course, they don't really check what the original book was. This means everything's unorganized mess, with different genres and classifications thrown into one big messy pile. Making sure everything is put back to its original pace is probably more difficult than just picking it up in the first or just placing the first place you see. Alright, time for a break. There's no sense in asking too much of yourself. To be honest, I have a lot of confidence as a store manager. Even though I've been doing this for the last six months. I had doubts at first, but whatever. Got my money somehow. The landlord's out for blood. Hem it's, it's either hemorrhage or hermitage. I'm gonna say hemorrhage, and I know that's wrong, but I don't have to say it. Hemorrhage is just an ordinary shop. If customers are only looking for something to satisfy their desire to read, most of them won't find what they're looking for here. The literature here, from the folklore of Japanese scholars in Japan to propaganda transcripts of the new religious groups in Southeast Asia, has piled up into such a vast ocean of books that even the owner has lost his view. There's really a lot of obscure reading material here, and the only reasons why people stay here must either be the familiar smell of old books, or that they're looking for some very specific research material. There's always an interesting conversation we had, though. Uh, but it doesn't look like there are any new customers around today. After all, the storefront doesn't look that welcome to strangers. There are a few regulars who come, who are either very quiet or have chatted away too much over the past few weeks, to the point that they don't have anything interesting left to say. The girl's hand rests on the edge of the bookshelf, and she's slightly moving her lips while browsing the books. Over the last few months, she's become a regular visitor. I like her. Quietness isn't a bad thing itself, and she's always been polite and not annoying at all. What's more, she's once bo bought Voyages of the Western Pacific in the shop, which instantly has earned some her some bonus points. Should I talk to her more often? I'm sure there's some good conversation to be had. I just need to finish my chores. Now it's the time for the break, okay. How do I do the game? Oh. If I'm having trouble with something cleaning my desk, it always clears my mind. If I'm looking for information, I can always check out this bookcase. There aren't any noteworthy books right now. If there's nothing else to do, I sometimes go ahead and organize the shelves, there's the customers in the store, so I should do my job as store manager first. A customer seems to have something to say. Case files. I thought this would be a murder mystery game, to be honest. I have no idea if it is, is or not. Seems like if there's nothing suspicious at the moment. Uh, what are my thoughts? <sighs> I think my inner brain's supposed to be killed by the smoke. So I guess we're the store manager, so I'll just give him my voice instead of the um depressed voice. That young girl seems to have something on her mind today. I'll try to talk to her. Come think of it. She's been dropping by much more often recently. But she rarely speaks. Maybe it's the atmosphere, or maybe she's a quiet type. It's hard to guess. In any case, it's my duty as store manager to take care of the customers. Alright. Only now that I notice how young she must be. Is she? I can't tell. I don't look here. Alright. Her uniform, consisting of a sailor suit and a young skirt, is quite well known in the city. If I remember correctly, this uniform is worn at a well-known private school. It's called Phoenix High School. I heard that they only accept female students, and that it's one of the highest rated schools. Quite a feat. It's a name that sounds appropriately strong. She wears big glasses that cover a huge part of her face, and is clutching a book under one arm. She holds it very carefully. It's almost like she's carrying a small animal. 
that's tr she's trying not to hurt. That's uh one of the books. That's ah. That's the one you want to buy today. Sorry, I'm just making sure. This time it's Trail of the Missing Fish. Her reading interests are a little weird. She's been coming here more often lately, and still becoming regular. The store isn't really that well known, so she must have heard about it somewhere. I flipped through the Trail of the Missing Fish before. The book is by no means interesting to read. It's more of an academic documentary. Something about ancient rituals and making sacrifices to a sea god. I have doubts about its authenticity. Well, you know. You gotta, you gotta praise it to her. <laughs> the village itself has been abandoned for a long time, and it remains were almost entirely destroyed. The author cites... Is that still cites? It might be. The author cites a large number of folklore accounts to the collaborate, collaborate the details, but it's all mere speculation. An entire book full of ancient texts, while the context sure is interesting, the quality of, its, of the writing is lackluster. Why would a student be interested in the remains of a settlement whose name has long been forgotten? Sure, the shop sometimes contains a rare piece of history that's significant, but the mysterious village, according to the author's nebulous sources, was, uh, was where these strange rituals were a common thing. It's actually quite scary to read. And it's not the most troublesome thing. <clears throat> it's it's not all simple, I'm afraid. <laughs> huh? I can sense your confusion. May I ask why you want this book? Um, why? I'm just curious. I can deny. I can't deny it. These things are interesting to me. There's more to this world than we know. The girl seems somewhat confused. Her blank eyes wander around the room. Can I, uh... Can I please have it? I... I really need it. It's just... There are certain rules and guidelines to follow. I'm sure you understand. The way the girl responds is so unusual. Even though it's the strange book, she shouldn't be this embarrassed. Maybe she's really introverted? I don't know if... The reason could be such a simple one. <laughs> but I, um... Yeah? <laughs> sure, it's, it's okay, or, uh... Or, uh, uh, maybe... <laughs> Is everything alright? I... I don't need this book anymore. I'm... I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll put it back. The girl takes the book from my hands and turns over the bookcase. It's all very abrupt, and the way she moves is extremely clumsy. It's easy to see how nervous she is, and that... She didn't... Think things through. Ah! Oh. Bookcase... I'm gonna call that number. I've never seen the number re rated NR, but we'll call that number. Bookcase number three. That's f Freud. Fraud? Freud. Oh, it doesn't matter, if I'm not mistaken. It's silent all of a sudden. She's just there on the ground underneath a mountain of books. I can't even find the right word to describe the situation. All I can do is silently walk towards her and the literary battlefield. I'm, I'm sorry, uh... I'm so sorry, this is... It's... My curiosity from a few minutes ago has been fully satisfied. Now she's acting like a woodpecker. Keeping her head down and bowling repeated an apology. She looks like she's on the verge of tears. Come on, <laughs> help me clean it up. We get some sense of order back. If the actual owner saw this, I'd be kicked out in an instant. Uh, of course, um, I'm, uh, really sorry. The girl follows me and helps me pick up the scattered books off the floor. Every time she picks up a book, she opens it and rifles through the pages carefully. After making sure the pages aren't damaged, she carefully blows away the dust before I hand the books back to me. Her hands are trembling, and she's obviously scary and nervous. Doing this in silence is only going to make Dad's grief more awkward. Time to find someone to talk about, to uh, line things up a bit. So, um, your name is, uh, Salil, right? Look, your student ID card, you must have, uh, dropped it when you fell. <laughs> um, uh, when did, when did that happen? 
Relax, you're regular here. I'm not angry because it's a small accident, alright? Don't worry about it, really. Let's get back to the topic. The uh, bookie wants a good one, sure. It's also very rare and valuable. I can't see why someone your age would want it so badly. I just can't sell such a precious book to someone so young. Someone who still shows a lack of control, you know what I mean? The emphasis on being can't sell. If you convince me, I'll make sure lending it to you. I'll lend it to you and you'll bring it back to me once you're finished. But don't go tell people about it. I don't want don't usually make exceptions. I don't want to have to lie to people and pass it off as a mistake should anyone find out I'm an exception. This copy of The Trail of the Missing Fish is a folktale, and given that this issue is at least 20 years old, I doubt the author was ever officially published during the time. During his time. As mentioned before, the book's contents and writing style are rather obscure, and it takes a lot of time to fully grasp its meaning. You might be uh, disappointed if you expect. I cannot read this. Jesus Christ. <sighs> Alright. No one's point if you expect to find an exact piece of information that you're looking for, but online search engines have come a long way. Our ability to search for information and find it quickly has long exceeded everything we think is possible. Cecile could be looking for something very specific, something so peculiar that it may only be found in this particular book. Such a young girl suddenly developing an interest in ancient religious practices for no apparent reason. What a strange world we live in. Celeste stays for a moment, maybe because she f still feels a little guilty. <laughs> Sir, um, you wouldn't believe me if I told you something. That depends what you're going to say. Just know that you don't have to tell me anything you don't want to. But if there's anything you need out of your chest, I'm happy to listen. I can fully understand why you wouldn't want to talk to your classmates, and some things need to be talked about, or they'll eat from inside. Bullseye. Her pale fingers clench the book tightly. <laughs> um, recently I've... I've been having some very strange dreams. Oh? Most of them are horrifying, um, so I'm really scared. I... I dreamed of a giant fire rising from the sea, engulfing an entire island. Many small animals lived on that island, but they all disappeared in the blink of an eye, swallowed by the flames. There was no trace of them after that. In our dream, I saw men dressed in ancient armor. They were fighting. They they held swords and spears and stood together in huge troops. Uh, a large squadron of cavalry rushed towards them from the hillside. There was blood everywhere. The, the men who were on horseback were shouting and, and screaming, and I, I couldn't understand the strange dialect, that, but they, they were speaking Chinese. I also dreamed of a huge plaza s surrounded by buildings. Foreigners wearing hexagonal star badges stood together in a dozen lines and were escorted to by the trucks by, by soldiers. There were mothers in tears holding onto their babies. The shoulder the soldiers showed no emotion. They, they knocked the cowering women to the ground with their rifles and then took their the screaming babies. Before I started having nightmares, I only seen these scenarios like that book il like in that book illustration or on TV. But I also saw many things that I've never really seen or heard about before. These aren't ordinary dreams, and I can't seem to forget about them. I remember them all vividly. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not very good at describing how I feel. Did it all seem too real? Still nods. They don't seem like normal dreams. Why would I have visions of such things when I don't have that good of imagination? I, I, I try to write it all down. If. They are realistic details that I couldn't actually know about, then that would be all the proof I need. I see. So this time, you tried to dream about tra traditional native festivals. You wrote, you wrote down what they were doing in your dream, and now you're looking for information that might give you some clues? To be honest, old literature as specific as this both. 
But to be honest, a literature as specific as this is both hard to find and hard to understand. Even harder without having some prior knowledge about it. There was a group of natives dressed in rags, dancing around an eight-legged fish made of straw. They spilled yellow wine on the straw heap and speared blood on a children's lips. They were chanting a strange song that I didn't understand. I, I had no idea, but they were singing that first, but I'm not very familiar with that, uh, Cantonese dialect. But things all, things became much clearer when I found out this book. So concludes her train of thought with a slight sigh. Um, there are a lot of customers who come to Hemorrhage to buy books have a story. But to be honest, this situation is a little more complicated. The human brain has many different ways of painting pictures in our minds, dream being the most common one. However, for most dreams, there's a logical explanation. Once you drift into supernatural territory, that's people get scared. But that's not the most pressing issue right now. I can't help but look back at her. Slow is afraid to make an eye contact, but she manages to raise her head to convey how sincere she is with her eyes. She is being completely sincere though. A half truth is still a lie. I don't know if she realized that. I'm not angry, but I can't blame her. In the face of uncertainty, she doesn't know who to trust and is extremely confused. Every situation is unique, for better or for worse. I've accumulated some experience in dealing with strange situations like this one. Go on like this will only lead to us running in circles. I need to find the right words, something a girl in her position can relate to. Now it's time to choose. Oh no. Hmm. And we could bluff. I don't like the bluff though there. I don't like intimidate, I don't like bluff. I don't think I like straightforward here either, I think I gotta go with this one. I did blurry avoid her eyes, put my pen down, take a deep breath. But there's more to that, isn't there? The girl's eyes widen as I call her out. Look, looking for information because you had some strange dreams. Nice idea, but only someone who went through the trouble of make-up story would explain it like that. But I didn't... Humans rely on subject mo motivation. If a thing has no value, no one will grant it much attention, let alone deviate such but so much effort into studying it. I can tell you're a smart girl, but believe me, interest is a bad excuse. You can stick with that approach, but it's not going to work. I approach Salil and look at her eyes. There's a lot of history hidden away here. Bates brought you hemorrhage. It's a special place. I hope you understand that. Salil seems to hold her breath. The girl holds tightly onto the book. Her fingers caressing the corners. It's a sign of how many thoughts are going through her head right now. Time feels as this moon slower. I don't know how long we've been staying here, but it, but after a while, Salil's eyes drift away from mine. Sir, um, <laughs> you really aren't an ordinary person. Um, thanks. I won't shy away from compliment if I get one. That's for sure. Still ignores my playful mark. She carefully puts the book back on the shelf, then turns to me with a serious expression on her face. It was my original plan, but <laughs> sooner or later I probably would have come here to ask you for advice anyway. I'm sorry for causing you so much trouble. I'm I'm really embarrassed. Hmm. Seems like you don't really know anything. All I can do is scratch my head. Plain dumb doesn't seem to be working very well. I want to believe that there are still people willing to help others out there, so it's nice to see they still exist. Oh, did she say that? Can I go back? 
Yeah. Oh, okay. So that was her. Oh, let's be reading her voice. <laughs> I, I wouldn't believe that there are still people willing to help Ellis out there, so it's nice to still exist. You're an interesting person, surrounded by so much knowledge from all kinds of different sources. Most people would never believe me if I told them what I told you. I can take a rough guess at your situation. You can tell me a story. I'd like to have the truth. The corners of Salil's mouth turns upwards into a slight bitter smile. It's a, it's a harsh truth, though. I really didn't lie, so the images are still in my head, but it's just like you said. There are other reasons why I'm paying so close attention to them. So this tone of voice changes as she looks towards me, but her eyes aren't focused on me. I saw my best friend in my dreams. She's like a sister to me. Huh? She was lying on the ground, twitching, her face as pale as snow. The ground beneath her head was covered in red. Blood was still pouring out of her. I, I, I couldn't see her eyes. Her right hand was completely mauled. She was trying to move. There, there was blood. So much blood. And I... I... The girl's getting more and more immersed in her vivid memories. She stares at me with blank eyes. I can see a figure reflected in her eyes. But it's... But it's not me. Sula covers her face with one hand. She looks panicked. She uses her other hand to point at the ground. As if something were lying there. She she kept trying to lift her head, but her neck was twisted too badly. She didn't react at all. I held her hand. She... I... Sula enters... Lil enters is in. What? Slil enters is in a kind of trance. Into maybe? Slil enters into a kind of trance as she becomes fully immersed into the memory. Her facial expression changes to one of the uttermost dread, and her mouth starts moving strangely on its own. Words spill her mouth. She can't control it. She's. Staring, the, the, the stare, the, the eyes. Wait, eyes? Did she say she couldn't see them at first? I, blood. Her, her neck. Those, those eyes. The, the, the eyes. Eyes. Looking at me. The, they're looking at me. They're staring at me. Looking at me. Gazing at me. Those eyes. I clap my hands to the line from her face. Ha. <sighs> She sits there with her arms strapped around herself, shaking, frightened. I just... I... What should I do? I jump around on her shoulder. Calm down. Calm down. So basically, the vision made you worry. Worry about your friend's well-being. This little nods. I... Can't bear the thought of her like that. It's... It's so horrible. I'm... I'm really scared. The, the more I remember... Before I... So leans against the edge of the bookshelf. Her arms are on her knees. So you decide to look for information on visions and hallucinations. You're trying to gain further knowledge about them. Trying to figure out how much of what you're experiencing is connected to reality. No response this time, but the answer is clear. This is starting to get troublesome. Uh, will you help me? So looks up, a worried expression on her face. Her eyes are slightly red and swollen from holding back her tears. She looks so troubled. I can't leave her alone with this burden. So, your interest is back genuine. That book... I thought maybe... I... Okay, take it easy. I won't leave you on your own. However, if you really want to help me help you, I need more information. Some more details to work with. Who exactly is this friend who's like sister to you? What's your relationship to her? Can you pinpoint where and when the visions took place? And more importantly, what exactly are these hallucinations? I know the situation is serious, but I still need to grab this basic concept, well, or I won't be able to help you. 
You're right. I'll tell you. Actually, I often get bullied at school. I don't have any friends there, or... And they often pick on me in groups. They all think I don't deserve to be going to the same school as them. They want to force me to leave. They don't talk to me, they steal my books, or they pour water in my desk drawer. They always try to make me angry or trip me whenever I walk by. The only person who ever stood up for me and told me to stop was her. Her name is... Eloise? Elise? Eloise or Elise? Eloise? I'm gonna say Elise. Cause that's easier to say. Eloise. Eloise. I'm just gonna pretend that it wasn't there. Just Elise. That is a really weird name. Alright. Her name is Elise. She's the president of the uh, school's art club. Without her, I probably would have given up already. When did you do meet? Around the middle of September this year? Interesting. From what you told me so far, I would have thought you've known each other for years. I wish that were the case, but I only transferred to Phoenix High School this semester. I had high hopes that people there would be nicer, that there would be a sense of community, but it's even worse than it was before. She sighs and looks as if she's holding back a frustrated laugh. Sounds tough. Is this art club somehow related to what you dreamed of? The floor of my vision is very much like the one in the club building, and Elise often gets in arguments with others because of me. Are there many conflicts within this art club? The situation between her and the others is very tense. Even though she's the uh, student representative. Did you just say everything? Say about it all? I mean, things like that could reflect negative on them, too. Truth be told, the teachers are more worried about the art competition. The preparations for what... For that have been their full attention. The what now? It's an art competition called... <laughs> Jesus. All the names are just... Let's just put like four random letters together. I guess this game is Japanese, so... It's probably more common, com com like, Japanese name. But, jeez. It's an art competition called the Yukai Cup. It's prestigious, it's prestigious and the level of talent is very high. It's serious business. I don't really know too much about these kinds of things. What can you win? Prize money? No, nothing like that. Honestly, for me, it's not that big of a deal. But I've only been around a few months. Many of the other multiple years, their pride on, is on the line when it comes to facing off against other students from other schools. So it's about honor. Every February, the Yukai Cup is the only thing that anybody talks about in Phoenix High. We always score well in competition. Sounds very persistent, if you ask me. They work so hard to prepare. It's that they're all stressed out. The atmosphere becomes unbearable. And the art club turns into a Mosher paddle cake. Paddle cake? Like a red powder, but giving it to her in her voice sounded like powl. Oh. <sighs> Alright. So it's regular her son. Just like me, Elise doesn't have much of a presence outside the art club. Considering her calm personality, it's hard to imagine her taking the initiative and starting a fight with anyone else. That makes you vision that makes your visions even more strange. There's no pause explanation for them. I would like to describe them as simple nightmares. I really would, but I'm convinced that there's more than to it than just that. Yeah. I understand that now. It really makes me wonder. Like I said before, I see a lot of these things in these dreams. Although I don't think see is the word to describe it, I can hear, touch, I can see, hear, 
and touch everything. It's as if I don't exist and I'm actually a part of it all. That doesn't really add up to what you said before. Could you explain it to me again? H how do you mean? I'm, I'm not very good at explaining this. Don't worry. Just tell me about something... Or, ah, god dang it. Don't worry. Just tell me about how you felt when it first happened. What was the uh, first thing that went through your mind? Still thinks it over. And opens her mouth to say something, but then shuts it again. She stays silent for almost a whole minute. Well, I think I was flying? Flying? Uh, so it feels like you're flying through the air? No, it feels like flying, but I don't have any sense of self. I can observe everything from above, but my perspective certainly isn't from heaven. The only reason I say it that way is so I can describe it somehow. Last time, I saw the city's famous Earthside viewing platform. A group of panicked people come running from the north, right towards people on the viewing platform. But luckily, security guards were nearby to handle the situation and prevent a mass panic. The people were shaken up and looked like they'd seen a ghost. They looked really frightened. All the same, they were such a small group of people that they were lost in a gigantic crowd of people. Apparently anyone knows the uproar from the other side of the viewing platform, and everyone simply carried on as usual. It's really scary how you can feel isolated and unsafe when you're out in public and surrounded by so many people. Afterwards, I went to take a look at my own at, at the place of my own. The surrounding streets and buildings were familiar to see. They were just like in that dream. Even the street signs were the same. It's hard to imagine that without having seen it for yourself. I've seen some bizarre scenarios play out in my life before, but until the visions of my friend, I never thought about active research on what I'd seen. I often look, I often lose track of time when I have those visions. I have no sense of self, no salil. It's all just a big blur of everything. Sol describes the situation as if it were a good thing. I'm surprised she isn't smiling with the happy sounds. However, as soon as my focus shifts, I quickly lose that state of mind. The same as with the real dream? By the time I start to question whether or not I'm myself, I are, I'm already in more of a conscious state and it's more of a matter of time before I return to reality. Well, at least you return your senses at some point. A dream that can even put... That even... What? A dream that can even put the fact in question is more than bizarre. That is not how I would have worded that. Alright. If I wanted to help someone, I'd have a hard time explaining it to them. I really appreciate you taking the time to listen to me. I'm very grateful. She bows her head, and already sounds less tense. Talking is really important. I have never been very sociable. It's awkward, I guess. But I see where you're coming from. Anyway, I just wanted to understand what I see. After all, if my friend is really in danger, I need to find a way to help her. Do you think I'm naive for wanting to find out whether my dreams are real or not? Of course not. In fact, you being so calm right now is remarkable. Let's take a small break. Do you want a cup of coffee? Silly's hemorrhage before the sun goes down. The hand she was holding in the hot coffee was ice cold, which I find difficult to even comprehend. After Silly's departure from the bookstore falls back into its usual silence. Only the books that are askew on the shelves show indication that something's happened before. Though, to be honest, it's probably more organized than before. Still, there's a lot of work to be done. I should analyze the information I have so far. It really depends on how much Lil is willing to tell me. We agreed to discuss it further tomorrow, but if you choose to give up, there's nothing more I can do. Instead of worrying about that right now, I should focus my mind on the matter at hand. Staying calm and collected, and take plenty of notes. That's my experience taught me over the years. 
even strange events that cannot be explained through common sense often follow some kind of logic. As long as there's sufficient information, I draw conclusions. As more conclusions are drawn, analysis of the event can be constructed. It's something I like to call the principle of reasoning. <laughs> Things I see are so real. I can nearly reach out and touch them. Normally my imagination is just so as vivid. That's why when I started memorizing the things I saw, how else could I ever be able to prove that they're real events? Presumed reasoning. I write down the question. Although her idea sounds somewhat naive, there's nothing inherently wrong with it. The problem is how to prove it. Even if Sula finds matches between the dream and reality, there's no actual solid proof. People often get a sense of deja vu, and this experience known as a sense of being present has its own plausible explanation of science. In times of emotional instability, the frequency of deja vu experiences increased. That might not be all, and it's too simple for an explanation, but under stress, it's easy for the brain to mess up one of its delicate processes. The viewing platform still mentioned is a pretty well-known sightseeing spot, so even if the architecture there gives her a sense of famili familiarity because of her vision, there's still no real verification. Past memories may often interfere subconsciously with the conclusion. She might have seen the place somewhere before. To answer this question, I can't rely on Salil's one sat information. The assumption that she didn't have any relevant knowledge beforehand can only be confirmed by a third party. I should take notes of well, she said. The ancient battlefield, the gatherings in the square, the scenes are bizarre enough, and there seem to be no explanation for them. That big fire men mentioned worries me as well. If there's any difficulty in investigation, I've only a limited number of options left. Those things happened at Phoenix High School. Riots at the Riverside viewing platform. That's all the information I can confirm so far. It's puzzling in the way, but at least I can try. There are more down-to-earth approaches to understanding what's happening in the city. If possible, I want to avoid involving any innocent bystanders. I was conducting my research on the folklore in the remote countryside. I heard a lot about supernatural dreams, but there's a world of difference between an innocent high school student and witches. It's obvious that Salila has already convinced herself of an answer to this all. But trying to actually prove it's something much more difficult altogether. The sky outside has already turned complete dark and I didn't even notice. The lighting inside Hemorrhage isn't optimal, but it's better than nothing. I turn off the dim light on the ground floor, which hold more simple than actual value. Lock the shop door and make my way down to the apartment. I'll use the bookshelf. Can I use the bookshelf yet? Yeah, I mean, it is grayed out, so probably not. Plus, the uh, guy said he wanted to go to the apartment, so I guess that's where we're going. There's no one around. I finally start to think. What a weird dream. She wouldn't have any reason to lie to me if she's just borrowing a book. A lot of people don't believe in dream about the past, much less that it could actually prove it. I just explained to Slil it wouldn't make sense to lie if she did. So what she said has to be true. However, it's no surprise that she's worried about a dream in which her schoolmate is in trouble. The situation is pretty unclear. I should find out more about what she's heard and seen. Okay, I don't have a whole lot of information yet, let's just um...
Alright. Hermitage's interior architecture is exactly convenient. To get from the storefront to the living room, you need to do a circle around the outside of the building to walk to the first floor. Right. The first floor in Europe and Japan and a lot of countries is the second floor. I will never understand that. Because it's... I guess you could say ground, and then ground plus one would make it the first floor. I guess that makes sense, but it's still weird. Because it's the first floor. It's the first floor you'd walk on, then you go upstairs, that would be the second floor you walk on. Then you go upstairs again, that would be the third floor. That makes more sense to me, but... Technically, with the basement, that kind of throws up branch in that, but whatever. Alright, let's, let's carry on here. If you stand up any further, you'll reach the warehouse on the, sec on the second floor of the house. That doesn't concern me. My daily walks between these two points are strenuous. It's my substitute for daily exercise. The apartment is far from neat, but I'm not the kind of person who can live in a space where every quilt is folded into a perfect square. I check off my shoes at the entrance and let myself fall headfirst onto the comfortable, soft sofa. I've been really lazy the last couple of months, loving the, the comfy, secluded lifestyle. Nothing's gonna change if I myself don't. I'm really gonna like, get back into my groove and find some form of daily routine. Unfortunately, I get paid for doing overtime. I can start by taking notes throughout the day, Maybe it'll help me collect my thoughts and get back on track. Every event has its own origin, cause, and effect. The terrible scene that Salil saw is undoubtedly right at the school. I need to investigate further on this basis. This computer is quite old, so you can't do anything with it except access the internet. Okay. Some topics can start a lot of rumors and need to be watched. The TV on the second floor is an old model with a curved screen. A lot of information is hidden in the local news that most people overlook. I can't rest now, there's no time to waste. I promise to help, so I have to take this seriously. Alright, let's see if there's anything new. I have to stay in this building right by the bookstore for various reasons. There are good and bad sides to it. One good thing is that I'm always surrounded by information readily accessible from the books. And yes, I was 21st century where you probably even have good reception on top of Mount Everest. As I turn on the computer, the familiar yellow light of the forum's interface appears in front of me. These here voice their opinions very openly in order to reflect their wide-ranging knowledge or simply have fun. Given it's the administrator one, given the administrator one hell of a headache, but I'd like to sit back and enjoy it. Having said that, the room is on problems. There are maintenance every five minutes and the layout's a mess. The moderators quarrel all the time. It's hard to count all the issues. Being surprised in terms of user experience and content value is a spectacle in every sense. There's always something new and unexpected going on, and the community stays very active. Let's see what I can dig in here today. Alright, this is a form about urban legends. The content will update automatically. After browsing the posts here, I can return list of posts. If I feel like I've gathered all the information, I close the page. Since I'm gathering intelligence, I should read about all of today's posts. Alright. So there's a huge spider, it's so gross, it's thin, nothing legs. Spots all over it. 
it wouldn't be there if there weren't any other insects around for it to eat in your house. Sounds like a white mustache jumping spider eats cockroaches. It won't bite you even if you catch it. It has creepy eyes. It's a white mustache jumping spider, which means you probably have other spiders or insects in your house. Just let it be. It's cute. Is it faster than a cockroach? How is this relevant in any bloody way? I would say it's the second most popular pet in China after the cat. What? Spiders are so cute. Cool, so I found the uh, poem, or the person that, um, Natsuki was writing her poem about. <laughs> Alright. Uh. Jean scissors create three-eyed mosquitoes to help prevent diseases. Too much text anyone would have a summary. Alright, so according to the official website of the University of California, Riverside scientists used so-called gene scissors, blah, blah blah blah. These yellow mosquitoes have three eyes and malformed wings. Scientists hope that these mosquitoes, by means of gene editing tools, will help prevent and control mosquito-borne diseases. The study was published in the latest issue of Findings of the National Academy of Science. Okay. Mathematics suggests that this technique will increase the genetic probability of the target gene by 100%. Why not kill the insects while you're at it? Do you remember how the cockroach came to be? So how exactly does this gene spread one by one? Blah 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 blah. Why? Why is this in the game? This seems more interesting. Here we go. A murder case. It has nothing to do with the current situation, but I should keep an eye on it, nevertheless. According to an article in The Sun, from the 15th... Why write it like that? Oh, whatever, let's try it again. Alright, according to an article in The Sun from the 15th, 14 year old Russian model, Balade Desubi, Desubia, Desub. I don't know. It's not Capri's off, it's not Capri yet. I don't know, I'll say that Russian name. Died suddenly in Sindhu last month. And this is thought to be due to fatigue. Menentitis or sepidus, but the autopsy report indicated that Veldea may have been poisoned during her three month trip to China. After her body returned to Russia, the preliminary results showed traces of a mysterious biological poison in her system. Russian media quoted law enforcement sources, Beetle may have been bitten by a poisonous insect. She may have been eating something, or she may have been poisoned on purpose. Last month, the Russian investigative community initiated a criminal procedure in connection with her death. They say it was meningitis last time. How to turn to poisoning again. Yep, sounds alright. Many supermodels have died of lack of ki- What? God, this is- This is really a comment section. This is... This is- This, these, this is a true comment section. I- they did a really good job in the comment section of this game. <laughs> That's... Okay. So I assume I probably have something with that, but... Who knows. Was the original 
chime of the clockwork tower called? Oh, this means something. This is probably what they call finding light in the darkness. I didn't realize this before. After I in the city, I found... Oh, cool. I found shelter at a local bookstore. The shrine's famous viewing point was breathtaking beyond belief. You all know that old building on the beach? Two years ago, I talked to a man who lives there. He told me that he was young. There was a chime of a clock tower that has a different melody than it does now. Sally can't remember what it's called. He's eager to find out the name of the old melody. I thought I'd ask you guys for help. Maybe the same clock chimes Wester Abney? Or Abbey? It must have been a long time ago that you heard those chimes. Maybe about 50 years ago. It wasn't changed in the 90s. Wasn't it changed in the 90s, only we changed back to the current melody? Answer to Supercell. They changed in the 80s, only changed it back afterwards. Okay. Why did they change it back later? I don't think the current melody is as good as that one. Okay. And that's all I can look through, so that's probably good there. Looks like it's time for the news. After a series of boring news, I hear something interesting. Alright. You do a casting voice. And, uh, next up is, uh, falling up to the sky in incident. On 13th of March, at 3 p.m., a road collapsed in downtown Mato. No one was injured. However, the road repairs are proving difficult to the extensive damage. At the present, the road section remains completely restricted to vehicles. All drivers, please plan your routes accordingly. In addition, the rumors that pedestrians witness an explosion at the scene. People are reminded to Please remain calm and vigilant, and a warning has been issued to the criminals not to take advantage of the situation. As of right now, evidence is still being collected and analyzed. The departments in charge hope to soon have more information for the public as to what exactly caused the collapse. It's rare for roads to collapse in big cities. I know the road section from the Porter is very popular, is a very popular riverside viewing platform. Roads in such highly frequented area are usually kept in much better condition than that. In other words, even small cracks around would usually be an immediate cause of concern, not to mention a big hole that leads to a collapse like that. According to, according to photographs in the news report, the sky pit is nearly 10 meters in diameter, and the hole is unusually deep. This doesn't look like it was caused by a normal explosion. Like they're just stalling. What could have caused the destruction and not even show up on the surveillance footage of the surrounding area? Something about this seems off. I assume it all happened so suddenly that they didn't have enough time to come up with a better cause. In other words, perhaps the problem isn't find evidence, but the actual cause of the incident simply can't be made public. And that matches her, uh, her story. Public thinks seen a ghost, lost a crowd, not people noticed the uproar. Looks like there are some clues. Let's see. Time to call an old friend. There you there. I need to ask you a favor. <sighs> Let's give her the, um... Let's do the, uh, Shizuki voice, or I guess... Yeah, we'll give her the uh, Shizuki voice. Another time. The plant department as well as the police have been instant, insanely hectically lately. Hectic lately. People who are, are busy. I don't have time to concentrate on anything else. Uh, never mind. If you've been to any of those places lately, 
You shouldn't have what I'm looking for. Hold on. Wait a minute. Is it about that accident? Well, I've got a bad feeling about this. If you're interested in it, things are only getting more complicated from here on out. How tomorrow? Yeah, I'll see what I can do tomorrow. Anyway, if it really has something to do with you, I'll stop by sooner rather than later. Alright. Done. All I can do now is wait. She can be trusted. But it's likely that she'll be grumpy and won't stop complaining. Alright. At least I made some progress. Time to turn off the TV. Recently contacted persons and events are logged here. Right stick to pan the view, left stick to move the cursor, and on characters. I'll be returning the overview. Alright. Okay, so we have a picture of Elise. Okay. Nothing too major yet. What's that? Oh, those are our text messages. Okay. All right, let's end the day. No idea you give this voice to. We'll do a summary of voice. Mm -hmm. All right, that's what I thought. Otherwise, you would have come back here specifically. Please, forget my earlier question. Since the grace of the world well, exists in everything, being able to experience this is absolute bliss. Yesterday and today across the land of stars, nature embraces ever more greatness. What a state of harmony and beauty. It sounds very positive if you ignore this location. She can't see the other's eyes, but the shadow beneath them are open, are deep. What? We do... What? We do what we're brought up to do. And the world is foolish and cautious. She can't see the other's eyes. She doesn't know what they're thinking. Even so, somehow she feels that there isn't much difference between them. Please, show me reciting these words. I don't blame you for seeing red, but there's never any harm in showing respect. It's a big day, and the weather is bad. Be especially respectful, yes. Be sure to do that. The girl takes a deep... What girl? Who are we talking about? What? I don't know what's happening anymore. The girl takes a deep breath and reads the illogical symbol on her hand aloud. There are worse things to worry about than this. No idea that was about. Alright. Finally, this side is done. I suddenly feel the need to clean up around here. Not because it's messy, but because I needed something to calm my mind a little. She said she'd be here soon, but her work schedule is always pretty busy. Unfortunately, she's always in high demand. Doing <laughs> still busy doing useful chores. Speak of the devil. I hear a familiar voice from behind me, and feel her placing a hand on my shoulder. 
This place isn't really yours, so you don't have to be so thorough. Unlike for some people, it isn't really my style to do things half-heartedly. I look for pile books and get up amidst a cloud of dust. <laughs> the air in this place is so horrible. You know how unhealthy that is, right? That is even more important that I clean up. It's just gonna get worse otherwise. I am doing myself amid this loud. It's one of the biggest drawbacks of my... of leading a sloppy lifestyle. The visitor stands there silent. Then she walks around. Meet Scarlet. Chief Logical Accounts... Consult... Cons... Consultant? Yeah, I guess consultant. I was say constituent there, but I guess consultant works. All right. Meet Scarlet, chief legal consultant at Golden Maxim Law Firm. Her monthly income is higher than most people's annual salary. In private, she's a tough nuts crack. <sighs> Looks like nothing's really changed around here. Scarlet takes a look around the room, and seems at a loss for words. As always, she's picking a strong... Aurora. That's not a real word. Stoic? 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 Sure, stoic. She's projecting a strong, stoic Aurora. Looking very... <laughs> competent? Competent? I was feeling confident, but yeah, alright. Looking very confident. And her professional and professional. Oh my god. And professional in her suit. That aside, it's obvious that she's still the same old Scarlet. A telltale sign being the simple fact that she has taken off her sunglasses since she walked in. Bookcases in the back area, on the ground floor, are lit up by a table lamp. So that you can actually see your hand when you hold out the hat in front of your eyes. I hope she never forgets who her old friends are. Even though you haven't dropped by in two months, you should see that there's no real room for any big changes. It's too back in here. Alright, enough of this. What can I do for you? She moves the ashtray aside and sits down. I can feel her looking at me from behind her sunglasses. Although her whole look is somewhat intimidating, Scarlet is quite famous among the lawyers at Mate Mateo. There's a reason for that. She's well informed and well connected. Uh, last month, a mysterious collapse occurred on one of the roads. There are rumors of a huge explosion floating around, but there are no, there's no actual evidence. Unfortunately, it seems as if the surveillance tapes were damaged. At least that's the official story pretty blatant lie, they ask me. They'll never admit it. But they need someone that they can trust to manage the extra mess away from praying eyes. In the last few years, you've been working with several administrative departments. You know your way around the industry. And have become somewhat of a household name. I mean, you've got connections. I don't think it's wrong of me to assume that such a delicate matter will end up in your hands sooner or later. Scarlet blushes. She knows I'm right. I learned my voice. So, I need first-hand information, and I can't think of anyone else except you. <sighs> you really know. You really do know me quite well. Her voice sounds tired. I silently take the ashtray, put out my cigarette, and await for a reply. You're completely right. I do have the video. When we talked yesterday. I already guessed that you'd want it. She just through her bag and takes out a hard drive. I reach for it, but can't get my hands on it. How now? No need to hurry. It's not that I don't trust you. You know I do. But you're not going to give me a good reason for why, as to why you want it. You know there's a cover-up. Something they're trying to hide. I need to figure out what it is. I need to find out the truth. That's all. I'm being honest with you. So... 
this teleporting again? I'm like a magnet for uh, all things strange. There's nothing I can do about that. It's all a little much. First, you're responsible for the fate of the world, then you suddenly disappear, outright vanish. Given a couple of more years, and your late friends flocked this monster, hidden away in isolation somewhere. I decide to ignore quirky remarks for now. Anyway, that's just one thing. <laughs> you're talking about the little girl? I think the fact that she came to your bookstore instead of seeing a doctor shows that this is all just a child's fantasy gone, aw gone awire. Gone a I have no idea how to say that word. Oh, come on. Would you really describe condition as normal? And don't tell me that your entire experience has left you cold. The way you're willing to look for evidence so stubbornly shows me that you've already chosen to believe her, am I right? Ever since those things last year, I call myself a normal run in the middle folklore researcher, feels somewhat of an art statement. There's plenty of strange things out here. It's a mysterious world we live in. I'd rather go out and make a fool of myself than ignore something and make a big mistake. Scott bows her head, deep in thought, unconsciously feeling around with her collar. <sighs> well, at first, I thought, hmm? Oh no, it's nothing. I thought of something, but it's got nothing to do with the girl. She looks at the hard drive and puts it in her bag again. What's this about? You're not just going to change your mind, are you? Come on, who do you take me for? Let's go upstairs. Though, you're welcome to try and use your superpowers to see what's on the on the that computer. Oh. Okay, you need a computer. Yeah, okay. Scarl takes out the key. Our Scarl takes the key out of my hand and opens the door to the second floor. The fact that she does it around is no surprise. After all, she's one of the people who have helped me move. Though, helped is a well to term in this case. Is it just me, or does this place seem a lot emptier than when I was last year? Well, it's hard to explain to someone who's so baffled by the notion of cleaning up. The computer's now a password. Scott sits down at the desk and starts up the computer. <laughs> at least software's update, so there shouldn't be any problem with the drive. What exactly do you want me to take a look at? Well, I'll see them up before and after the class. No, I mean, where? There's more than one camera. I raised my eyebrows. Oh, I guess the people working the surveillance equipment all took a break at the same time when this happened? Hmm. Start where the uh, two northern roads intersect, along the Riverside Highway to the south, all the way to the monitoring point on the edge of the viewing platform. More than a dozen surveillance camera feeds pop on the screen, one by one. Okay, now just help me align the videos in real time. Leading up to the moment of the collapse. <sighs> Easier said than done. He <laughs> thinks I'll want to simple click of the button, like in the movies? Scarlet Grumbly sits in front of the keyboard and drags all videos in the correct order, one by one, all sorted by time code. The computer, which could easily be considered a relic by now, He's starting to run really hot with the fans all working overdrive. So, judging from this, the rumors about it having been an explosion are true. You'll find out soon enough. Scarlet presses play, and a part of the screen suddenly turns white. Turns out things aren't quite simple and can't be explained by the rumors flowing around. What appears on the screen looks more like a lightning bolt crashing down than a fireball. That's... I start looking for additional information in the other videos. The people look so scared. Even if you're the most courageous person on Earth, it's normal to make a run for it in a situation like that. Nobody... <laughs> Nobody even thinks about turning back to look for the others. They're all frantically running around like a bunch of panicked rabbits. Pay attention to these people here. They're all heading south, towards the big crowd. I can see several shadows, almost being swallowed up by the debris. Two people trip and fall or run away, but the others made it. In a final surveillance scene, several men in police uniforms can be seen. 
keeping the people away from the crowd. They're carrying something in their mouths. It looks like whistles. Stop. That's it. The time code comes to a stance at last. 14, 58, 18. So, what? 258, about 3 in the afternoon? Okay. Yeah, that's gotta be it. I turn off the computer to stop annoying to stop the annoying noise of the fan. Yeah. Nice to hear you found something. My chair at the class? It's just a guess, a suspicion. Let me get your thoughts on it. Scarlet nods eagerly without hesitation. Even though we've been separate for a long time, we still have a tactic understanding, our tacit understanding. Even during the most difficult times, our approach has always been the same. It's always worked. I take out my notebook to check the information I've gathered so far. Alright. So Scylla wants to make sure she wasn't seeing any real events in her dreams. Scylla wanted to make sure she wasn't seeing any real events in her dreams. However, she would never be able to find concrete evidence on her own. Nevertheless, there was a certain detail in the dreams Salil described to me that she couldn't have known about in advance. I'm sure of that. The information that Scarlet gave to me confirmed that it happened in reality. By that logic, it isn't difficult to draw conclusions about the illustration. Okay. Save button to fill out suspicions, B to withdrawal to the last suspicion, and then A. Okay. The right information can solve the problem, let's give it a try. Is the question that's realistic? In her dream, Salil saw a wonderful scene. Salil believes that these aren't just mere illusions. I would say that. Oh, it's all three of them. Does the order matter? I have no idea. The order matters. Vision approved. Okay. Her visions reflect the past. Okay. Let the story begins. Completed the first deduction. All right. Still had a very similar vision. The panicked people running, the viewing platform, the whistles. She said, Sunrise was playing somewhere. That's an opportunity to verify the truth. Scarlet has given the situation some thought as well. Hmm. The nearby clock tower should be right on time to play Sunrise. Even if she found out about, some, about that some other way, the commotion was officially due to the common road damage. That's a statement given by the authorities. A student walking around downtown on a Thursday afternoon. If she was there when it happened, her absence from school would have been noted down somewhere in the school's records. <laughs> you won't seriously make me get the class attendance records, will you? Will I? But seriously, even if she was lying, I don't think anyone would ever go out to such lengths. Road damage is reported. The pant crowd wasn't. Those are two separate incidents. The latter was not reported anywhere. Yet, she still connected the two and knew the details because of her dream. <sighs> there are only two possibilities why Slil made that connection. She's aware of the two events. Somehow, even the unreported one is actively concocting a dream that's realistic. Or, she really just happened to know exactly what was going on because of the dream. And even if gossip is being spread around the incident, 
there's always some time after it happens before it ends up on the news. It took the people who ran away about two minutes to get to the viewing platform, and they were quickly stopped by the security guards. It's not a busy street. There is not a lot of commuting going on there during the, that time window, so it didn't even attract that much attention. Nobody's talking about it, even the few people that were there. It's hard to find anything more than a small snippet of what happened there. Seal could have known about it from any news channel. Only someone who was present could have made up such a lie. And there's no way for her to have been there across the nation. Now you know what I mean. Oh, but yeah, we can both use some fresh air. I still decided that would break. You can smoke aside, but that's no, it's healthy. Quit smoking half a year ago, but I'm just trying to make a gentleman here. Scarlet chuckles, and sits there with a smirk on her face. I can't imagine how Dan and Neko would have reacted if they heard you say that. Just trying to show off that I'm a multi faceted man. I scratch my head. Scarlet seems uncomfortable on the sofa. She walks towards the window, stretches a bit, and then slowly makes her way towards the door. Actually. Yeah? By the way, Scarlet, your help means a lot to me. I wish I could pay you somehow. Oh, good god. You're really helping on this, aren't you? She lets out a defeated sigh. This sort of that collapsed, or rather, exploded. There are many people on the investigation team. I'm not in charge of it. But I always had a feeling that something was off. I don't know why. I see what she means. The evidence on the surveillance material basically breaks the law of physics. The only thing left was a deep hole. It made no sense. No victims, no rubble, no burn debris. Seeing all the people running makes it easy to assume that there would be solid evidence. But there's no proof that anything happened. Scarlet could have easily pretended to have not noticed anything and kept looking the other way, continuing to collect money from several government agencies intent on keeping a lid on things. But I know her too well. Turn a blind eye is her style. That's why she's my friend. When it comes to tracking trouble, we're probably even on the scale. <clears throat> I don't like you in that regard. I'd rather do anything I can to recover the truth than look away. That'd be a mistake, and I'd regret it for the rest of my life. Scarlet stares at me with a serious look on her face. There's no doubt in her eyes. Okay, so what do you want me to do? Intelligence sounds isn't my strong suit. So if there are any new clues, later, you'll have to piece them together. Yeah, no problem. That was my plan anyway. Alright then. We'll have to sort this whole mess out somehow. There's no way to drop it now. Still deserves an answer. <sighs> Be patient like the Buddha? Is something I was often told. That's not exactly me, is it? Well, we'll just have to wait for my face to become a little chubbier, and then I'll take the role of Buddha then, huh? Deal? What? Whatever. She smiles, but it's a bitter smile. She knows how much at stake here. I know you're just trying to calm the atmosphere here. I'm sorry. I just don't know how to respond to this right now. It's all a bit much to take in. You're right. I'll make sure Sula explains everything in more detail soon. She probably left some things out for a fear not to take seriously. Now she doesn't have to worry about that anymore. Sula didn't go into too much detail about the origin of the tree. We won't have time to keep things hidden any longer. Lies come in with thin air, but this is connected to something real, something tangible. Even if it was just a regular incident, accident, I need to know, for more clarity. So, Phoenix High School is in place, right? There are rumors flying around about some really bad things going on amongst the students. I'll really twist this community. I like to get the bottom of it. That little girl named Slil has been bullied? Yeah. The others in our club are completely out of line. So far, it seems as if only bad words and some malicious pranks, but that's bad enough already. Who knows? Well, these kids. Scholar frowns. 
my words must have concerned her. That's terrible. Are all kids these days so cruel? That behavior can have a number of reasons. Some of those kids probably just can't help it. I bet some of them just do it to fit in with the group because they're afraid of being targets themselves. I understand that. So let's do some big in, shall we? It's possible. I'd really appreciate it if you didn't get us into any legal trouble. Oh, come on. I'm professional and you know it. Scott picks up the leather bag, steps out the front door. The sun shines down on her and carefully readjusts her, glass, her sunglasses. Like a model, look at the perfect shot. I guess nothing's changed. I'm glad you helped me help this. It feels good. Like a relief union of sorts. Take care of yourself. You too. Think about yourself every once in a while. Don't let the hard work get to you. Scott waves her hand as she walks away, knives her in her head. With Scott's help in this case, we should have new results soon. I get a little bit of fresh air, then head back into the store. Can I save? Yeah, let's just save here. Oh, uh. Oh. Hmm, alright. Well, yeah, that'll do it for right now. This episode of uh, Hemorrhage. We'll continue on here, and, um. I guess we'll continue on. We'll talk to Slil. But, yeah, until then, peace.